Hello everyone. Welcome to the Highway Survey and Design class. In this lesson, I will talk about the typical cross-sectional forms of subgrade, cutting and half cut and half fill. Do you know how the highways are constructed? Before highway construction, our original terrain was not as flat as the completed highways. Therefore, in highway construction, you will often see various machinery such as excavators, bulldozers, and large trucks working busily. What are they doing there? Why is so much earth and soil produced? Let's walk into today's lesson. We have previously talked about the cross-sectional form of fillings. Next, we'll discuss the opposite form, excavation. This is a typical cross-sectional diagram of an excavation. Generally, both sides of a cutting are fully excavated. This side slope is an earth slope with a relatively gentle gradient. This one is a rock slope where the rock is harder and more stable, so the slope is relatively steep. For a bench type cutting, one side doesn't need to be excavated and relies directly on the natural slope of the mountain. Of course, this is suitable for areas with good geological conditions. Otherwise, the mountainside can easily collapse during vehicle passage. Another type used in areas with good geological conditions is the uncommon half tunnel form. This form is suitable for solid rock, requiring high stability for the rock itself and posing a challenge for design and construction. However, this can save on construction volume, but safety and construction limits of highways must be considered during application. Highway design strictly adheres to the principle of safety first, life paramount. The half cut and half fill subgrade combines both filling and excavation, an economical cross sectional form. It is particularly emphasized that many students think half cut and half fill mean equal parts of fillings and excavation. That's not true. As long as there are both fillings and excavation in the cross section, it is uniformly referred to as half cut and half fill subgrade. This is a completed half cut and half fill subgrade. Common forms include the following. The first type is the shoulder protection subgrade. Its filling section may extend too far to be easily built with a thinner soil body, requiring the construction of shoulder protections to contract the slope foot. The second type is the masonry subgrade, similar to shoulder protection subgrade, but with a larger quantity of filling. When the slope extends further out or even does not intersect the ground, leaving the slope foot hanging and unable to be filled. Stone masonry is used to contract the slope foot. The third type, retaining wall subgrade, is a common form where the retaining wall is a structure that stabilizes independently of the subgrade. Providing support for the fillings and stabilizing the subgrades. Retaining walls are generally motored stone structures used to contract the filling side slope foot to reduce land occupation or demolition, prevent water erosion, or prevent steep filling slopes from sliding. The fourth type is the low wall subgrade. Now observe the low wall at the bottom of the slope. What is its function? Without it, the slope would continue to extend and occupy a wider area. Don't underestimate this width. If there are houses or farmland within this width, setting up this low wall will significantly reduce demolitions and occupy less farmland, greatly improving economic benefits. It is also used for the excavation of side slopes with loose soil quality prone to debris falls. Through the above explanation, I hope you can understand what typical subgrade cross sections are, their differences, and their functions. That is the content of this lesson. Thank you all.